Well, joining me now is Dr. Peter Mansi, a forensic fire investigator who worked for the London Fire Brigade for more than 30 years, and Jeff Wilkinson, a charter surveyor and fire engineer. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us. Um, Peter, when you look at the building and the devastation, it's hard to imagine where you even begin an investigation looking at the wreckage that's been left. Well, it's certainly going to be a protracted and complex investigation for the London Fire Brigade and the Metropolitan Police, who will work together to uh, do a, a, a thorough job on, on that. But even just finding where the seat of the fire was in the wreckage like that, to a, to a layman, it, it feels almost impossible. Well, it, I'm sure it does, but uh, certainly the skills that uh, our investigators have got um, in, in our public services like the London Fire Brigade are um, excellent and they will be able to uh, determine the area of origin first and then um, determine the cause of the fire because there's been talk of an appliance starting the fire, but nobody knows that yet. And, so, pre and presumably following the course of that fire, given there are so many questions about, we know the external cladding for one, but it also spread very rapidly through the centre of the building, didn't it? Well, again, uh, part of the investigation, we'll look at the timeline, which is critical in any fire investigation. So then we can see how the fire develops over a certain time and does it meet the parameters that it should have met. Um, you've heard somebody say already on your programme that the fire should have been contained within that uh, flat, um, if not the room, uh, certainly in, within that flat, not spread to another flat uh, for up to an hour. Um, Jeff, what is the sort of key question from what you can see from these dreadful images? What mm. leaps out at you first? Well, fundamentally, the building just hasn't performed in the way that you'd anticipate that the building would perform. Um, although you've just shown some tests where the cladding has combusted, um, there are obviously a lot more tests that have been carried out in the past that have shown that these materials do not lead to that, hence the reason why they're permitted under the regulations. And I think we need to be very careful about speculating at this point in time as to, to what the cause was and how they spread. But you would expect that there were fire breaks within the cladding and that this would have prevented it spreading. It, it's very difficult to really contemplate the idea that the advice is, if there is a fire that you're aware of in that building, to stay put. If people had followed that advice last night, they might no lo longer be alive. I'd say the, the, the key point here is that in the first stages, you're best off staying. But once the fire service have arrived, then they can make a dynamic risk assessment of the situation and they can choose which floors to evacuate. If you end up with a building like that where everyone is evacuating, you can end up with a situation of mass panic and that you're not looking for, for that to happen as well. So you're actually looking for a controlled evacuation. By being in an hour's fire type cell, you are perfectly safe under normal circumstances for that. What's happened here is something that's very much out of the ordinary. We have had, uh, the, there are several thousands of these um, tower blocks and there are several hundred fires in flats during the course of, of, of any given year and they don't spread like this. So I think we need to reassure people first of all that this is something very much out of the, the ordinary and find out why that is as quickly as possible. And, and Peter, there'll be people watching this in their flats in Tower Blocks tonight who just want some advice and some reassurance. What would you say to them? Well, I, I've investigated many fires in Tower Blocks and attended operationally fires in Tower Blocks. And um, as has been said, they haven't spread. And I've actually um, seen people that would have put themselves in jeopardy if not suffered with the smoke inhalation had they left their flat. So the stay put policy uh, has worked over the years. But this is an exceptional this circumstance. Is exceptional it would appear and, and we await for the full investigation. Absolutely. Dr. Mansi and also Jeff Wilkinson, thank you both very much indeed.